welcome back to one on one with Dr. Fritz Pinnock. All right, after you were offered those two scholarships, you went to Edmonton in Canada for a year. Why? Uh, yes, well, I have a sister there and I decided to go and explore just to see, but. I went to a very cold place. Mm. <laughs> I went in the winter. Oh, the details, so I was stuck behind the snowstorm, <laughs> and then I that was I learned to appreciate Jamaica. Oh yeah, period. big time, big time. <laughs> then I really realized I wanted to come back home. I shouldn't talk this low, let my daughter hear it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> in Canada, yes. Yeah, she's in Canada now. Yes, yes. All right, yes. following in your footsteps. <laughs> in, in <a> way. <laughs> but um, did you? Do you think that gives you a greater appreciation of your heritage, where you were born, when you are exposed to, to another country? It does. Traveling by itself is an experience, and you know, it is an education in itself. And of course, you'll, you never appreciate what you have until when you move away from it. So Jamaica has a lot to offer. And we can make it much better. And that is my passion. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. All right, you returned to Jamaica and ban began working at Mutual Life. That only lasted a year, though. Yes, because it was quite an interesting year. Because I went in and, you know, tried to learn a lot. I picked up some life skills along the way. And then I decided after that to go to the University of the West Indies mm -hmm. to do my first degree. And your first degree was in economics and accounting. Why those subjects? Oh, I didn't even know what I wanted to do then. Mm. And I just, you know, because I was at sixth form, of course I was tossed between the sciences and the arts because then you had to choose. And interestingly, um, yeah, history was taught at Hampton, so I thought it's nice to pick up history. Yeah. <laughs> I can understand why. <laughs> yeah, part of the journey. Eh? Mm -hmm. But you soon realized that economics and accounting wasn't for you. Not at all. I realized very early. Mm. Because after you balance the, you know, you, had the, you have the accounts balance, what do you do next? you follow the process all over again. And I said, no, so where is the site? To I was too hyperactive, mm. you know, and so I wanted something to break apart, something to build, something to do. So I realized quickly that that was not for me. It's very good and I respect those in it, but it was not just not for me. Mm -hmm. What did you think you could have done with those uh, qualifications, though? Well, it was then that I realized that there was such a gap because you go to university, you do these things, and it have no relation to mm. reality. Mm. It was a wake-up call for me right then that, hey, I'm doing this, but why am I doing this? Yeah. I'm just following the trend, following the herd. Yeah. But it leading me nowhere. Interesting. I, I wonder if the youth of today that are about to enter uh, tertiary education are really considering their, their field of choice you know, because as you say, it has to relate to the market. And it's more so now when I'm finding this, and this is part of what drove me into this era, to help young people to how to rethink the space. Mm -hmm. Because as I watch this video, and if you look at a telephone 150 years ago, you could see the difference between what Bell made yeah. and the new modern cell phone. Yeah. If you took a Henry Ford Model T car, which was a full mechanical yeah. device, and <coughs> a, car, a Tesla today, you mm. see the difference. Yep. But you take a classroom back then and today, they're basically the same, same. with just some different colors yeah. with the paint. Yeah. So nothing has changed. And in fact, the education sector is the least developed of all industries since the Industrial Revolution. What an assessment. Yeah. Wow. After you completed your degree, you went to Grace Kennedy. What was your position there? Well, uh, quite interesting. I was working with then Paco Kennedy, Mr. Francis Kennedy is my mentor, you know, um, may his soul rest in peace. What a great man. Mm -hmm. So I was on the uh, management training program with him and he gave me such an opportunity that I got to work in just about every company in the, trans in the, in the transportation sector from the port to the cruise shipping, to the cargo shipping, to the cold storage, and I went from the ground up from the warehouse. I got exposed to everything, which gave me a good 360 degree view of the industry, and I really appreciated that. Is that where you picked up your love for logistics? Yes, in fact, it was, then I was there, and then I realized that going in the shipping industry, I had no knowledge of you know, what I was in. Then I realized there's a whole language to itself mm -hmm. when I, and then Grace Kennedy they afforded me the scholarship to do my master's in England. And then there was a new master's in logistics and I decided I'm going to go into it. People wow. were asking me why logistics. Mm. And I said to them from back in 1989, 
let's watch a Panama Canal. It's going to tell a new story. Yeah. You I waited the, long. You had the vision from then. Yes. There was also a lady that influenced you to go into logistics too, isn't there? Yes. This was when, uh, before I went to Lanaman and Morris Shipping. She was um, the daughter-in-law of Mr. Lanaman, Vance Lanaman. And I was so impressed with this young lady that, you know, she, her job would take her all over the world. And she had such an impact. And I said, wow, but this has no relation to accounts what I'm doing. Because accounts would take me from the desk to, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I don't mean, I don't be crucified by my accounting friends, right? Anyway, but I invited myself to an interview mm -hmm. after. Yes. And <laughs> that was another interesting <laughs> crazy part. <laughs> so, I mean, she opened my eyes, you know, to this industry, and I was happy she did, because I learned it's a whole new world. Mm -hmm. As you said, you were still at Grace Kennedy when you pursued a master's in international shipping and logistics at the University of Plymouth in England. Did your practical experience give you an advantage in the field? It did. It did. And of course, it gave me a perspective. And by this time, there were many things happening in the European Union. Mm -hmm. And one of my professors, he actually, uh, you know, was working on the London Freight Futures Index. Interesting. So I did, did a lot of work with that. And you know, I was able to connect to the Onassis in Greece, the ship owners. So, you know, I used my time to do a lot of research. And, of course, I wanted, I was hungry to learn more. Mm -hmm. And that exposure, that period was a very interesting period in my life. It must have been. Lay the foundation. And mm -hmm. how did you come to terms with the, the different culture, the different environment of England? It was very interesting. It was very interesting because where, when I went to the University of Plymouth, there was not many of, you know, my shade there, you know, and, you know, you met some e cases of racism, but I use it very positively, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, to propel me forward yeah. because, you know, you, you get along, you get around because this happens everywhere, yeah. but you, you, you don't make yourself a victim, you become a victor and True. use it to your advantage, which is what I did. So Absolutely. it was interesting. All right. Um, a year after getting your master's, you changed jobs again, this time Jamaica Containers Repair Services Limited as CEO. How did you grow that company so rapidly? Well, it was an interesting period. Um, I was approached by Zim Shipping Line that they wanted to set up this company because there was a shortage of repair services. So when I went in, I was invited to this meeting in New York with the president. Then it was at the World Trade Center before it was destroyed. Went there and they gave me this proposal that they wanted to develop a, a cost center. But uh, I welcomed the challenge. I said, when I was finished, I said, could this be a profit center? They said, no, but you're going to start w working on Zim's equipment and we're going to pay just a fraction of the cost. I said, okay, not a problem, but allow me to go outside to other shipping mm -hmm. lines. They said, okay, you can. So within three months, we broke even. And, you know, that was a start of a spiral the company mushroomed and blossomed and did so well it became the largest center for repairs for zim worldwide so that was quite an interesting experience <laughs> wow we're one on one with decorated educator dr fritz pinnock who has been guiding us through his professional career join us on the other side